Good evening. Please join me singing our opening song. This number 822 in the gallery. I am the bread of life. Verses 1 and 5.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. The miners, all prisoners, 
had made a tiny silver chalice, only one and a quarter inches high. At Easter, said by Dr. Schumann, over 400 of the Lithuanian mothers received their Easter Holy Eucharist hidden in tiny cigarette tins, which were how the hosts were distributed. Each consecrated host was wrapped in a small linen and was hidden under a top layer of cigarettes. They could be broken up for four communities. That's quite a remarkable account of the significance of how sustained the most holy body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ meant to the East faithful who were in prison in Siberia, who never, even though they were in prison, never gave up hope. And furthermore, this story is something to encourage us and motivate our faith and trust in the gift, gift, that we are each privileged to receive in the Holy Eucharist, especially this weekend as we celebrate the solemn feast of Corpus Christi. It's a gift. It's a gift we never want to take for granted. Hundreds of years ago, the great theologian of the church, who I've mentioned before, St. Thomas Aquinas, poised a question that continues to fascinate many today. He simply said, why did Jesus Christ give us his body? If Jesus Christ wanted to leave us a memorial of himself, why didn't he give us his miraculous power instead? Like the ability to cure the sick, to calm the storms, to multiply bread, to feed the hungry, as we hear in today's gospel, to expel demons, and even raise people from the dead. And the answer is found in the fact that we might only think of Jesus Christ only when we think about our body mechanic. And this isn't a slam against our mechanics. We need them. But when do we need them? We go to them only when our car breaks down. And since Jesus Christ's supernatural power in us would be constant and dependent, we most likely would never give a thought to the source of that divine strength. And maybe we would take that gift for granted. Thus we each need Jesus Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity in order to be mindful and intimately united with him. Jesus Christ does not want to simply share his abilities, his powers, and effects with us. Rather, he wants to share in us his very, he wants to share with us his very self. Furthermore, we recall what Jesus Christ said in the days of gospel from St. Luke, where he is concerned with the feeding of the crowd of 5,000. He said, and I quote, give them some food yourselves, end quote. Jesus Christ himself fulfills this offering in the Old Testament by offering his own body and blood on the cross of Calvary, again, as a gift for the life of the world free us from sin, to free us from death, to be saved and to inherit the kingdom of God, we need each to live our faith through Christian acts of love and acts of love and charity in the likeness of our blessed Lord. As beloved sons and daughters of the Lord, we must be quite careful to never forget, to never forget, that before receiving the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, we must be in a state of grace. We know what a state of grace is. We have to go to confession before receiving Jesus Christ if we are not in a state of grace, if we are not free of any conscious mortal sins we have committed. Many of these days have become indifferent to the condition of our souls. This is obvious by the very fact that while the frequency of people attending and receiving the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist has increased, the attendance to the sacrament of reconciliation has drastically decreased. When we take Jesus Christ into our hands to eat the bread of life, we become one 
with our Redeemer, with the Creator. It is a tremendous abuse of the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist to attempt to receive Jesus Christ in Holy Communion while our souls are stained with mortal sin. Again, if we're not in a state of grace. Some have said it's almost like crucifying our blessed Lord all over again. If our souls are not in a state of grace, and they are in a state of sin, that intended union between Jesus Christ and us does not happen. It will not happen. That is why, if we read many of the lives of the saints, they went to confession on a weekly basis. They did so to ensure that they were in the purest state possible before receiving Jesus Christ into their hearts. As we celebrate this solemn feast of Corpus Christi, the United States begins a three-year renewal of Eucharistic revival. We need to ask ourselves, what are we doing before we come to receive our blessed Lord? What are our preparations before Mass? What are our preparations and what do we do after we receive Holy Communion? Are we saying Amen when we receive the blessed Lord in our hands or in our tongue? For when we say Amen, we affirm. We affirm that we believe that as Jesus Christ truly present in that Holy Eucharist. And what are we doing after we receive our blessed Lord? Are we offering thanksgiving prayers for the gift, the gift that we're all so very privileged to receive? <laughs> I'm not worthy to celebrate the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Jesus Christ has chosen to do that. And we are very privileged to receive that gift of the Holy Eucharist, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of the Lord. He desires to do that for us. Holy Mother Church teaches that the Holy Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life, and that's in the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1324. This means that because Jesus Christ is really, truly, and substantially present in the Holy Eucharist, Contained in the forms of bread and wine, we are blessed indeed to recognize that all the graces we enjoy as Jesus Christ's disciples come from this great sacrament. And all we aspire to, that fullness of life of God, is contained in that sacrament. Through the most holy body, blood, soul, and divinity of our blessed Lord, we come to know God and we come to know that gift of redemption. When we eat the true food of the Holy Eucharist, Jesus Christ changes the manner in which we exist. The Eucharistic Lord changes our life view. He assists us to grow in the virtues of Christian living. He transforms our minds and our hearts concerning the values of truth, of beauty, of dignity, and worth. And He, He is the one who makes us truly happy. O sacrament of most holy, O sacrament divine, O praise and all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray to our loving Father for all the needs of the world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer for the Church, the body of Christ, that we will deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice, which gives life to the world. We pray to the Lord. That the redemptive the power of Christ's Eucharistic sacrifice will extend to the hearts and minds of all those who govern. We pray to the Lord. Lord that the graces of the Holy Eucharist will inspire us, inspire an increase in vocations to the priesthood. We pray to the Lord. Lord for a blessing on all fathers and their families on this Father's Day, and that the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist strengthen all marriage, marriages and families. We pray to the Lord. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. That the sick may be comforted and healed, and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Joseph M. Wall, father of Mike and J.P. Walton, Margaret Forney, and Anne Porridge, who died this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord Please pause now and add your own personal attention. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God the Almighty God. Amen.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I am him, says the Lord.
foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit. So there will be no dating mass here on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. We ask you to pray for all of us and we pray for you. Number two, thank you to those who have sent me cards and offered prayers and gifts on my anniversary, 12th anniversary to the priesthood. Thank you. And to those in, uh, outside of our parish who have done, who have done so, thank you. And finally, remember that tomorrow on the tomorrow on the end will be a Eucharistic procession down at Notre Dame Her Hermitage, and at the same time, three other places within the diocese: St. Bernard Parish in Bradford, St. Catherine of Siena Parish in Du Bois, and at St. Peter Cathedral in here. There'll be four Eucharistic processions going on at the same time as part of the beginning of this three 